Okay, gotta clear something up for y'all as we continue the Keter class Why You Wouldn't Survive. Y'all have made a valid point that I hadn't covered the proper 100 numbers when I did 001 to 2000, specifically 682. Well, the reason for that is that I'm purely going off a list from the SCP wiki, link in the description, and numbers like 370 and 515 are in the 3000s and 5000s respectively. So whatever number is first among the 100 or 1000, that's when it will appear on this list. Sorry for the confusion. Also, these are SCPs from the Keter class that I deem a danger to your, a group's, a city's, country's, the world's, or even the universe's survival. So, if they don't pose a threat like that, then I most likely will not be covering them. We are a quarter of the way through this, so let's get to work. Today, we are telling you why you wouldn't survive the SCP Keter class 2501 to 3000. SCP-2546 is if a sexually active ditto infected you to become anything it wanted, but only once. An unidentified retrovirus similar to HIV that can spread and bind to every cell within the human body while spreading through primarily sexual contact and bloodstream exposure in some cases. So think 28 days later without the saliva and more getting it on. It will infect just one cell and then invade and replace the chromosomes as it pleases between three to five days, spreading throughout the immune system in order to prevent an immune response as the host's chromosomes are constantly altered throughout the body. This process, depending on how much of the virus is in your body, can last between one to 10 years and will become excruciatingly painful for the victim as their body transforms physically and mentally, altering bone structure, internal organs, altering them in any kind of way with muscle aches and fatigue, hormone fluctuations, and even losing your sense of self and forgetting who you are. If the transformation is extreme enough, the host can die of internal trauma, but if not, will become a random designated person of interest down to their DNA structure, like an unnamed individual becoming Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, or a seven-year-old Asian girl becoming U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders. It is believed this virus is manufactured by a brilliant scientist in order to infect specific targets to make their loved ones watch them lose their identities and frame of existence. It can invade local water supplies, can be harbored in blood samples for banks, or be used within sexual partners with persons of interest. So you can suddenly start to feel a slight painful sensation till you can literally feel your insides and outsides turning potentially dying as your organs restructure to become a person you probably never knew as your mind and body are erased and replaced. The SCP organization can seek to stop the virus early on and perform facial reconstruction surgery, but mostly, in most cases, it will be too late and you will be a completely different person with your original consciousness deleted from existence. SCP-2559 is basically medical student's disease if it were actually a disease, an infectious virus that can only be spread if the hosts believe they themselves have contracted the virus in any capacity with virions being detected in the bloodstream in the first two hours of infection and in the cerebrospinal fluid in five hours. The virus can cause drastic symptoms such as pressure within the head leading to tunnel vision, brain hemorrhaging, and convulsions that can cause strokes and mental instability. Blood flow to certain organs and appendages can be restricted to cause necrosis and gangrene, effectively shutting them down and rotting off parts of your body. Victims can behave extremely negatively and refuse substances like food, water, medicine, and any kind of heat or cold, meaning any kind of methods to aid or cure them will be met with heavy resistance, even if they are conscious or not. The disease's extreme symptoms have given it a 100% mortality rate. And because of this, People's fears and paranoia over a disease that no one understands the transmission methods of will start to spread rumors and hysteria over it. The more the word spreads of this disease, the more of the population will assume that they themselves will and can contract the virus in some form. And if you believe you do, you will suddenly have these virions cropping up in your blood in just a few short hours. Going to WebMD or listening to any news sources or social media will 
exacerbate things, discussing how this disease will be a veritable unknown, causing more and more people to fall ill through fear. Unless you are one of those people who don't believe they can get sick or choose to live under a rock and shelter yourself from the information frenzy of the world, you will probably keel over with rotting organs, a bloated brain, and a refusal to eat, drink, and take your prescribed medications. Honestly though, that sounds like me when I'm having a depressive episode. We were wrong about 2012, because SCP-2574 exists, and exists as a 12 meter tall Leonin creature composed of sandstone and smooth muscle tissue, and is constantly surrounded by a flock of birds of prey. These feathered foes will constantly swoop down and attack the statue-like being, chipping away at it only for it to regenerate any damage they cause. It is constantly moving at a speed of between 3 to 5 kilometers across land and 2 to 3 kilometers across water per day. It will do whatever it can to move in the direction it heads in, either outright destroying any obstacle in its way, squashing any person, or climbing over any roadblock. Its most dangerous ability is the fact that the area surrounding it will become exactly like a battle reminiscent of World War I conflicts, with physical embodiments of aerial strikes, chemical attacks, and World War I weapons strewn about. Any area it has passed through will deal with hallucinations and mind-altering effects that make people think it is World War I, from the conflict itself to the socio- and political ramifications of it. With the statue's effects of World War I nostalgia getting stronger the closer it gets through its destination of Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, leading to attempted assassinations of political officials, police brutality, civil unrest, countries battling at borders, and more so as it progresses through Russia, Ukraine, Romania, and Hungary. So basically, you either get crushed by this moving statue or die in its wake. As war, war never changes because it will be exactly like World War I all over again, leading to a possible death toll of up to 22 million if it's similar down to the final days. Although once it has reached its destination, it's impossible to tell what could happen at that point, but the results will be disastrous. Now, have you ever had that stoned friend that went on an hour-long rant about fractals? Well, that stoned bastard was right. SCP-259 is a fractal image referred to as the Wisenglass Spiral. When this image is perfectly rendered, a portal to multiple different areas and dimensions will occur depending on the spiral's size and orientation. One dimension leading to one of pure superheated plasma clocking in at 19 million degrees Celsius another dimension filled with venomous cockroaches, another one where you are transported into deep space not too far away from a black hole, these portals will bleed out anything of its dimensions into our own, causing hellish fiery explosions from its epicenter, pouring out the hordes of the venomous insects that will attack any living thing, or the third of these mentioned dimensions sucking in any matter into its frame, much like the black hole it neighbors for victims to die out in deep space. These images were only perfectly constructed on a certain CD labeled 100 fun fractals you can print and then distributed as a common item that since then the SCP organization has spread information saying this specific CD can cause a computer destroying virus trying to prevent people from using it. If these CDs were used and opened by any buyers specifically with anyone interested in making these fractals, any number of these dimensional portals can open and cause devastation. SCP-2601 is the opposite of a forget-me-not, having no physical description aside from passed down information and originally, presumably, found in an American church in 2013. It apparently holds a mimetic component, rendering any information on it imperceptible to the living creature's mind and instantly forgotten after any encounter, making it literally non-existent to non-organized minds. It can also delete any information from reality that may linger on it, even written or recorded accords. Anyone that makes an attempt to perceive this entity will be subjected to a terrible, unforgettable, or actually forgettable infection. At first, anyone that remembers the person that is infected by this SCP will be forgotten by everyone they know and love in reality. As time goes on, more and more of the world will alter and forget all actions caused by the infected person, even down to minuscule impacts they made on society. 
their identity and appearance are wiped off any official records from the minds of all life and any recordings, writings, or pictures depicting them in any way, shape, or form. While a person will still be alive, the infected person will not be perceptible to anything in existence, effectively meaning they do not exist except to themselves. If you try to unearth this mystery of this SCP, not only will your efforts be fruitless as it deletes any information you attain of it, but surely become a ghost wandering this earth with no one to mourn you or to remember you. One of my favorite quotes from my favorite anime One Piece has a saying that goes, <laughs> But if you are doomed to live without literally ever being known or seen, to never speak to another person, to never build another relationship, to never enjoy the little things of life, to wander the earth completely forgotten, would you ever have been alive in the first place? SCP-2636 is a mix of Clever Girl, Dino Religion, and the ending of War of the Worlds. We are looking at a 3 point meter or 11 foot tall female bipedal hybrid of reptile and mammal characteristics with large eyes and ears to better see and hear. It is quite intelligent, being able to self-identify, solve mathematical problems, and even can create art, although it cannot speak in any known language, using song-like vocalizations instead. Its digestive system only really allows for a liquid diet using its bone-tipped probascus to draw blood from others. It can be a threat with venom sacs that can administer a hemorrhagic toxin that can liquefy the internal organs of its prey easily. While it sounds like it would be an indomitable species against humans, it is actually a lightweight, being easily brought down by carcinogens, pollutants, and loud noises. Most notably is how susceptible it is to any kind of human disease, dying out from even the common cold. It is actually a part of a larger species named the Potrix caprarum sapiens, with its ancestors building a Colombian-style temple complex 12,000 years ago, who was slowly hunted to near extinction by humanity for millennia. Within these temple walls, depictions of humanity as evil, destructive creatures are scattered everywhere, as the Potrix are depicted as weak and sick. They are the downtrodden. The center of this temple houses a 4.7 meter tall mass of bones, organs, and limbs topped with six goat heads strewn together by animal hides. SCP-2636 was seen to start giving birth, insinuating asexual reproduction, as inner wall scriptures predict. From the pile of corpses in the temple, a gang of eight 50 meter tall entities will emerge, looking similar to its construct of bones and flesh and will join in a high-pitched song-like vocalization with SCP-2636 as their voices reach 140 decibels, levitating SCP-2636 the temple 25 meters off the ground in the process. When the ritual completes, the giant entities are shown to be able to harness light energy to shoot down nearby spectating helicopters as the temple returns to the ground with its newly born infants. Preceding events involving the 2636 and the entities resulted in the liquefaction of 90% of personnel within Site-151, including deafening and blinding of all surviving personnel, destruction of SCP Site-151's primary structure, and turning all water in the area into toxic chemicals for regular human beings. SCP agents saw a joint effort to completely destroy the entities and even the newborn infant to neutralize any threat they all imposed during these events, leaving only the original SCP-2636 to be contained as she slumbered on. It's hard to see what religious powers can be drawn by these vocalistic race of dinosaur-like people, but with their unnatural ability to inject toxins into our body that liquefy us from the inside out, while also them being very susceptible to any known disease. Being hunted down by our vast intellect and technology, they can always be pushed back till they are able to begin a ritual that may hold godlike creatures to serve them during gestation periods to wipe out nearby populaces to potentially try and enact revenge at mankind's overhunting nature. But if they were to be able to asexually reproduce in high numbers through this temple, they could easily see to overhunting mankind by literally melting our innards while the temple is blowing us away with its bright white energy. The further capabilities of asexual reproduction of the lizard human people could lead to even larger and more disintegrative destruction in further areas and regions. 
SCP-2646 stands as a 44 meter tall water tower that can hold 450,000 liters of water and is apparently 60% full. It can change its location at any time in the small town it's located in while emitting a cognito hazardous effect to nearby townsfolk, who assume the tower is still in its original position and refuse to even discuss the water tower at all when approached about it. Out of all the townsfolk, only one high school chemistry teacher is unaffected by this tower's effects, and her attempts to find reasoning for these events after the water tower teleported to a location very close to the high school she worked at, discovering that no one else would acknowledge this strange occurrence. She armed herself with explosives to destroy it outright. However, local law enforcement had her admitted into a psych ward on counts of attempted terrorism. While anyone that may oppose it or try to destroy it would either be incarcerated or even killed by its subservient prey, it can fuse and integrate with buildings and areas. For instance, the water tower had fused with the high school, where classrooms had now become centered around water fountains, with water fountains found every two meters down the hallways, and plans for complete construction of swimming pools in cafeterias, gyms, and other wide open rooms. People involved within these buildings will consume as much water as possible until they most likely suffer from hyperhydration or water poisoning. Over time, people will end up not being accounted for in written records. However, the people themselves will not have any recollection of any missing person whatsoever. They will forget someone if they go missing. One door in the establishment will lead to the inside of the water tower, where the dead bodies of the missing people will be found floating like the kids in Dairy Sewer. This tower will constantly change its position, transforming places frequented by people to alter their thoughts and memories so that they will constantly drink water from multiple sources until they keel over from overhydration and die, and then their bodies disappearing to be a floating corpse in a tower with their their loved ones completely forgetting them as this tower continues to fill its innards. If you are lucky enough to not be affected by its mental manipulation, those that are mentally controlled will fight to keep you down or dead. There is no stopping this water tower and its vorific nature. SCP-2664 exists as a set of Ukrainian conjoined triplets fused at the navel, all facing opposite directions. While it is thought to be a single gestalt thinking entity, each separate brain acts as a control division, effector division, and receptor division, with psychokinetic abilities that allow it to levitate on its own and manipulate objects from extremely far and further distances. Anything within five kilometers of it can be heavily afflicted by this dead space reject. Sentient organisms like humans will have their brain chemistry severely altered, depressing the sympathetic nervous system making people dislike violence and weaponry as well as having a diminished stress response, basically making them submissive and easily defeatable. Non-sentient organisms like rats will suffer from rapid onset spongiform encephalitis and toxic sulfate buildup, dying within minutes. It was initially created with the codename Project Redline in Soviet Russia under General Secretary Secretary Stalin's rule as a psychic deterrent in order to brainwash people into their Soviet socialistic regime, considering people under 2664's effects would not rebel or fight back. Over extended periods of time, years, and even decades, the SCP will increase its mental powers exponentially to the point that it can cause the immediate brain death of all human life forms within a 200 kilometer radius of it. The original facility it was kept in was eventually integrated into its being to use as a form of defense against military and nuclear attack. But continuous assaults can eventually cause the facility to dematerialize with SCP-2664 disappearing as well. If it were to grow its mental capabilities without restriction, it is very possible it could completely wipe out the human race with anyone that approaches it to kill it becoming submissive. You will slothfully bow to a three-headed, conjoined child as it thinks it is integrating your mind with it as a form of togetherness, but in actuality is wiping you from existence. SCP-2680 is a macro virus that takes the form of bottles of beer and other alcoholic beverages with the glass, label, and caps 
forming parts of the virus's keratin and the liquid inside working as a mixture of stem cells, water, xylitol, proteins, and RNA. While the initial effects of consuming the faux alcoholic beverage mimic being intoxicated or drunk, the viral beer will also mutate your esophagus to produce more of this macroviral liquid. Infected individuals will slowly start to eat their own skin around their fingers, limbs, and torso. After six weeks of skin eating have passed, the eaten dermal tissue that has digested will be regurgitated as components of the beer or even soda bottle they originally drank from, including the label, glass bottle, and eventually liquid to pour into the glass itself. You're going to be puking up bottles and the liquid within them. They will continue to do so until a sixth bottle is produced, where they then suffer amnesia and forget they did this unusual act, and proceed to drink from them again. While skin eating might be detrimental, the virus it stems from originally was much more realistically deadly, being a disease extremely similar to smallpox, except the pustules that develop on the outer cavity of the body, SCP-2680's pustules, will develop on the inside of your body. These growths will expand outwards continuously until they burst and explode their gooey insides in every direction, infecting anyone nearby. However, infected personnel will actually bite these pustules off their body before they burst in order to drink the liquid inside of these whelps because they describe the sensation of drinking this goop as soothing for such a painful affliction, effectively self-cannibalizing themselves. The original virus that this stems from has a mortality rate of 90% over 30 to 50 days. While it was originally discovered in 1891 amongst smallpox outbreaks, it was effectively quelled by mixing it with various components and alcohol with a varied history since then. So it's safe to say this erroneous report from 1919 of the original virus probably mutated into the glass drink producing one we know today, and at any moment could possibly lead into an even deadlier virus like it was originally. But until then, we will be dealing with a literal coronavirus, get it because it's a corona beer, where we end up puking our own drinks and eating our own boomer-like boils on our body, as well as the flesh around it, just to get a little relief. SCP-2700 is a complex energy-based weapon and device devised and created by Nikola Tesla. What appears to be an early but still very functional design of a linear particle accelerator attached to a command-based operating system. But the epicenter of this device is kept top secret from even a majority of SCP staff, as the falsely labeled plasma power core is in actuality a discrete energy phenomenon that within its mass, the direct flow of time is reversed, fluctuating its energy state from maximum entropy to minimal entropy, and opposite to any known thing in the universe, Basically, it's reversing time and defying all laws of nature. The only thing keeping this energy from being released is an unknown material surrounding it, keeping it contained. But the device containing this energy is currently set to activate and release in the year 2234, exactly 300 years after its initial creation. Once it is released, it's expected to cause a chain reaction so devastating that the entirety of the universe will basically implode in itself into an infinite energetic singularity, or basically an inverted Big Bang. So, it's pretty simple. Unless we can find out the materials containing this time and reality-bending energy before it expires in over 200 years, everything we have and ever will know will simply go up its own asshole and cease to exist. Must be a Monday! <laughs> Now, if you hate roaches and small towns, you'll definitely hate SCP-2704, only occurring in small villages with an even-numbered population of 400 or less in the U.S. states of Nebraska, Wisconsin, Wyoming, Minnesota, Alaska, and Oklahoma. When every single member of this small town is either asleep or unconscious between the hours of 12 to 3 a.m., each person will disappear, and in their place, a giant cockroach of similar height and weight 
will take their place. For the next 20 hours, every giant cockroach in the township will start to break down furniture, housing, and any available structures in order to make weapons or just procure any provisional weaponry. Good. Good. After this 20-hour period, these giant armed cockroaches will go out to the streets and split off into groups of two, where each pair, in succession or one after the other, will fight each other to the death one-on-one. -on -one. The winner of each pair will then, from there, be paired up with another cockroach to fight. Hey, you're on our turf, man. Hey, man, I, I cut you. I cut you up so bad. You, you're gonna, you're gonna wish I don't cut you up so bad. And this blood tournament will ravage on between these fucking pests that won't go away until all but one of these summoned cockroaches lies as not only the sole winner of this bloodied tournament, but the sole survivor. And the surviving cockroach will disappear like before, and the human it took its place from before will reappear, and only that human. Only the humans of victorious cockroaches will come back to Earth. So, if you live in a small town in the previously mentioned states in America, with an even-numbered population, you will disappear before you wake to be replaced by violent giant cockroaches, and you will never come back if your designated roach ends up falling in its violent conquest. What if Splatoon was an all-consuming collective? SCP-274 at face value is just a variety of paints disguised as graffiti, but when applied to surfaces like walls, it can spread to other vertical surfaces and connecting walls, although the paint cannot spread to glass and metal. From there, a transformative process will occur, where the interiors of the walls will transform into mesoglia, the tissue found in sponges, the walls of the building into the gastrodermis, which is the digestive tract of a jellyfish, and the outer walls of the structure acting as a protective shell, turning the entire building into a subset of the SCP, becoming similar to species of the Anthozoa class like coral and anemones. Basically, it will look like a building, but it will actually be a giant anemone. The building will start to emit sounds to passers-by, like breaking glass, coughing, and even whimpers of pain, attempting to draw in people in order to consume them. The noises made will be made by human residents of the building, being a part of the SCP itself, while they are dressed in gas masks slash respirators and bright hoodies. They act as nematocysts, barbed membranes within the SCP that can and will merge in and out of the inner walls in order to surprise prey, with the mask that they wear flattening and turning into graffiti, only leaving that behind when merged. Spray can-like appendages can appear from their right hands as they try to spray the SCP-related paint onto the eyes and mouth of their victims in order to paralyze them from the neck down so that they place the unmoving prey into a cavity for the SCP to consume them. These masked human-like entities will duplicate themselves every 24 hours, and once a dozen of these clones exist, the surplus of the masked people from there on out will leave the building to search out other buildings to spray paint and make more of the SCP structures. It is believed that if left unchecked, that this SCP could easily encapsulate an entire city within just 20 days slowly digesting humans that may enter more gigantic in newly formed Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. But Jeng Jenga? Bazinga! This SCP will exist as individual parts of the classic game of Jenga, where you build a predetermined square-shaped tower, and players must disassemble it piece by piece until one player causes it to topple over. The SCP will go into effect once 42 pieces or more are together as a Jenga tower, and if, or more appropriately when, it eventually collapses, any building it is contained within, no matter the size, will also come crashing down. Coding for this SCP has been found in numerous 3D print files of these Jenga Tower designs and pieces, and if used, can make more of these destructive Jenga Towers. So if you find yourself ever playing Jenga, you should either super glue that bitch together or get out of whatever building you're in before the roof caves in on you and crushes you. Because if that Jenga Tower comes crashing down, so is the building you are in.
SCP-2764 is gigantic, and I mean a huge entity that is approximated to be about 382 meters or 1,200 feet tall, weighing around 150,000 tons with nearly 80 massive tentacle-like appendages emanating from its body. It will move in a quadrupedal manner in the Antarctic, and if any organic creatures stand 50 kilometers from it, the being will seem to be smaller in size the further away they are. But if they get near or within this 50-kilometer radius, the being will appear to grow in size exponentially. It will teleport its entire mass sometimes for periods of 48 hours, disappearing with no trace in this time only to reappear at its last location. It will also telepathically project voices in people's thoughts, although they will be unintelligible to anyone hearing them, potentially driving people insane as communicating back with it is impossible. It's unknown what this creature's intent or purpose is, but something of this immense of size, capability to flicker in and out of existence, and being difficult to pin down due to its unusual parameters, could mean a dangerous situation if it were to leave the frozen tundra of the Antarctic and wind it up in a highly populated area and unintentionally possibly crushing entire cityscapes in its movements, as armed response would have an extremely difficult time trying to figure out how to neutralize this lumbering, tentacled behemoth. SCP-2774 is a mimetic image, donning the visage of a human-shaped form wearing a sloth-like costume that will appear prominently in non-live media such as TV, movies, magazines, and of course, memes online. Mostly featuring itself in the background of whatever it appears in, if this image is even unknowingly glanced at for longer than five seconds, a person will slowly lose all cognitive functions and higher level decision making and will only be able to use their body freely for two minutes a day. On the outside looking in for other people, their body will appear to move normally in a more robotic, emotionless, and sometimes paranoid way. But in reality, they are moving completely against their own will, and these people are basically passengers in their own body. While taking a back seat in your own brain, people see this sloth humanoid in the distance watching over them, either growing more dreadful or growing an affinity towards the image of this sloth. For only 120 seconds a day, the person that's a backseat driver in their own body will regain their free will and be able to control their body again. But due to their predicament and not knowing when this will happen, in basically 23 hours and 58 minutes a day where you don't have your own body, when you do regain control, you are probably gonna be drastic and scared, being unpredictable in what you might do before losing control again. While under the control of this entity, the manipulated body will create images of SCP-2774 in order to potentially affect others. The more people affected by this anomaly, the more powerful its effects are, unless a top secret project known as Project XXJ9 is implemented. But even then, with the most precautions in order, 40% of people will still fall victim to the SCP, no matter how much we prepare. However, those that are completely colorblind or cannot perceive colors of red or green and their hues will be unaffected by this SCP. SCP personnel will look to incinerate anyone that has begun constructing images of the sloth-like being, and for anyone else, they will be relocated in hopes of learning more of this image and its effects on humanity. But eventually, when you start constructing these sloth images, you will end up being also killed in order to prevent more of this infection. So basically, you will lose all free will as you watch your body be used by a sloth demon to infect others exponentially until authorities burn you alive. So in the meantime, don't look at any images containing sloths going forward, or else, welcome to Robot Hell. SCP-2662 is a being many would draw a physical comparison to the Lovecraftian horror icon Cthulhu looking humanoid in nature, but with 20 hydrostat octopus-like limbs coming from its back, with each limb being fully functional to perform up to 10 separate tasks at once. 
While not hostile in any way in its own direct intents, its unintended cognitive abilities are its true danger. Being near or exposed to its presence for over six months can cause approximately only 5% of the population to know its utmost desires and will do anything to fulfill them. It also spawns, involuntarily, religious followings of people that will do anything to reach their god and do random sexual and violent acts in his name once a month, despite 2662 hating these gatherings. Each month, these religious extremists will try to reach 2662 by any means necessary, even breaking into the SCP organization. No matter how many times they are apprehended, defeated, or even killed, they will return, with the returning members or new members altogether, learning from their failures to try other methods to reach their god. While the SCP is lethargic and resentful at its own cult, if it decided to use its mental abilities for nefarious purposes, it could easily see to indoctrinating more and more people as its members murdered, pillaged, and raped across the globe, slowly growing their numbers and adapting 2662's influence to a grander scale. SCP-2786 exists as a bipedal human that can change its form at will depending on a situation and can alter reality as it sees fit in minor but very notable ways, being able to insert itself into most discernibly horror movies as it inserts itself into the narrative to change the overall story to prevent main characters from entering or starting dangerous situations. Examples like knocking out Jack Torrance in The Shining before he becomes fully insane or entering the video game amnesia where this person forces the player to spectate as they quickly finish the game, effectively preventing the game's trademark jump scares and deaths from happening to the player, meaning the SCP will change a piece of fiction where the main characters will not die and make themselves out as the hero. The SCP can manifest themselves in reality anywhere at will as well, being able to warp reality in order to fit whatever narrative it wishes. Basically, think of this SCP as a fanfiction writer that inserts themselves into a story while making themselves the deus ex machina hero, except that they can alter any media to make themselves out as a hero, and everyone else, even the SCP organization that fights to protect the world, as evil. The SCP can, and will release other SCP creatures it deems as victims, no matter their intents or history. Being able to warp into any media to change the narrative in the rest of the movie, book, or video game to their will will make them come out as a hero and can have long-lasting consequences, as it can erase any records to its nature and past while leaving the masses believing what this specific SCP wants, possibly leading to violent insurrection in organizations and possibly even bloody battles and costly wars, not to mention that it releases other SCPs that could cause more death and destruction. SCP-2974 is a shitty situation that can really bug you. Being a colony of 87 beetles of the coccinellity class that bear an inscription Peterum Christum, or in English, Small Christ, on their backs, these little buggers excrete hellacious amounts of indestructible fecal waste that does not decay over time, with this collective being able to produce one kilogram or two pounds every 30 minutes. This semi-translucent and green feces bears a moderate level of carcinogens and immunosuppressants, effectively halting the immune system so that people and animals alike are at high risk to just about any disease. And on top of all that, the carcinogens in there could possibly also lead to cancer. This much fecal waste going unchecked due to its indestructibility will eventually pile up and bleed into food and water supplies while also making living conditions extremely unsafe and deadly. Well, if you're thinking of wiping out the crap at its source, the crapper of a bug, well, tough shit. As the insects, while unable to reproduce due to being sterile, also cannot be killed. They do not age or cannot be subdued by any known methods. Attempting to freeze them led to them creating enough body heat to melt the ice. Paralyzing them and ceasing their organ functions through chemicals didn't prevent the creature from pooping. Plugging the butthole and mouth did nothing as the insects would just rip themselves a new asshole somewhere on their body to poop even more. Trying to send them to space stimulated these bugs so much while inside the rocket that they pooped so much feces that they caused the rocket to be overweight, leading to a destructive explosion and failed launch. 
encasing the inside or outside of these insects in cement only lead to the poop secreting out of them to turn gray. Literally anything you do, they will just keep coming up with shit, just like your ex, leaving nothing behind but cancer, weakness, and even more shit, just like your ex. SCP-280 is a blackened humanoid mass with two large white eyes and elongated hands while its lower body fades into nothing, meaning no starting with the feet on this one, Roanoke. Its body can fade in and out of corporeal form into a fog-like haze. It will move around in a gliding, sleepwalker-like motion as its arms extend outwards. Although it carries enough strength to pull apart steel easily, its eyes are inoperable and relies on a hidden sense to track people. At all times, it will slowly move move towards the nearest human possible in its non-physical form, and when within 14 centimeters of a person, will solidify to grasp and tear the victim apart. This assault lasting up to five minutes long in order to fully kill its prey as it fades into its non-corporeal form to move on to the next human to kill. If, however, it detects no humans nearby, it will ball up its form against a structure and wait for a human to enter its presence, where it will attack again. It will steer clear from brightly lit areas though. If any sudden light hits it, it will reveal its bug-like eyes to intimidate spectators and retreat into the nearest darkness. Or, if the area it's in is completely illuminated with no darkness to flee to, it will simply fade away and reappear in a different, darkened area. It requires no food, water, or sleep to live, and due to its ability to go in and out of a basically physical form, makes it an almost uncapturable and nearly inescapable threat if it locks its sights on you, requiring you to be in brightly lit rooms if it continues its pursuit of you, and will rip anyone apart in mere minutes. To shreds, you say? Well, how is his wife holding up? To shreds, you say? SCP-2820 is if Final Destination was a coordinated weapon, being a coil gun mortar-like apparatus with a satellite dish at its rear end as it is controlled by an AI. Not an artificial AI like I said in the last video, it's a little redundant to say artificial AI, but the name of this AI is named Kalki. It will randomly locate one person on Earth every 24 hours, and when it has acquired its target, will cause them to die in a random chain of events akin to the butterfly effect within the next 24-hour period. There was no preventing this course of actions and reactions from occurring. And, as any number of variables in the surrounding area will happen in order to extinguish your life, no matter how improbable your means of death may seem, such as tripping in the shower and hanging yourself, your weight machine crushing you, or a charcoal grill exploding you into bits. <laughs> Basically, if you are targeted by this, any number of things can happen all at once to make sure you die. Anyone that witnesses a person murdered by this event will say that they have seen a chimpanzee in a trench coat. Although this is not real, it is only a visual hallucination that is created by this machine for any spectators. So bottom line is that at any moment you will be marked for death by an AI and be murdered by random shit happening while a hallucinatory chimpanzee watches over. SCP-2821 is yet another sphere because balls are at the forefront of deadly creation in SCP universe. This ball in particular being a spatial vacuum currently over half a kilometer in diameter, although it is changing in size at the speed of light. Anything taken within its mass will be altered to fit its own laws of physics, effectively obliterating it in the process. It is currently near the surface of the moon right now after being discovered while mining into the lunar exterior, creating a large hole in its discovery site when found by mining equipment. At its current rate, if this sphere were to continue growing unopposed, it could easily lead to an end of the world scenario, completely destroying our world, the solar system, even the entire universe as we know it, warping all reality to a new set of physical laws that nothing we know can withstand. This sphere currently has no countermeasures as it slowly increases its volume with no way to stop it. 
SCP-2833 exists as a group of genetically identical humans that each have unique appearances, although their origins are linked to possibly the Aghori, a very small group of major religious ascetic people of the Shaiva traditions in Hinduism, with practices like believing themselves to possess healing powers that are considered highly contradictory for the Hindu faith. These Aghori-like members have the ability to generate matter within their own bodies, most frequently creating parasites known as 2833-A that resemble red-colored flies. These little flies can invade a victim's body by entering through any orifice like the mouth or anus or forcibly enter through an open wound. From there, the fly parasite will hijack the host's nervous system so that the original human SCP can control them by either forcing hallucinations on the victim or just taking control of their body. Female humans that have been invaded by these flies will be inseminated by a sperm-like extension of SCP-2833, and after a year of being impregnated, the female host will die in the process of giving birth to a new SCP, where thereafter the newborn SCP person will consume the body of their dead mother. These SCPs revel in death much like the Aghori they are inspired by, smearing cremated ashes on their bodies, dwelling at putrefaction sites, and using skulls and bones as cups and chalices. If they were allowed to continue as they are as they reproduce, they could easily spread more of their parasitic flies to control others, to force them to see their ways, and forcefully impregnate more of the masses to create more of their parasitic and controlling warped reality of Hindi faith. Oh dear, SCP-2845 exists as a nearly three meter tall deer-like entity with a human face, antlers, and all of that. A ring of ice particles with seven metallic hydrogen and helium spheres adorn the space behind its head. This dearly beloved SCP can instantly transmutate and reconstruct matter at will, although during this process, no matter is created or destroyed. It simply restructures it. As it roams our planet, it will alter the 5 meter immediate area near it, transforming the atmosphere, hydrogen, and helium into a kind of an ammonia mix, while converting all plant life near it into metalloid-based organisms. It will not actively seek out prey to assault and mostly acts in self-defense, and if attacked, will conjure up columns and cones of great size up to 10 kilometers away to kill its combatants. It generally is peaceful towards non-combatants, however, it will not spare a docile person if they do end up wandering into its presence and its matter-altering effects, transforming people into hexagonal columns devoid of any organs besides their entire form just becoming brain matter, effectively rendering you not necessarily dead, but just a giant brain, basically a plant with or without thought. It is impossible to harm this dear human physically, as even constant military bombardments have left it unscathed. So we have a deer god, much like the Pokemon Xerneas, that can reshape matter at its own discretion, either killing anything that tries to kill it, restructuring our plant life into metal beings incapable of producing oxygen, and destroying our atmosphere, or just turn anyone near it into a hexagon-shaped piece of giant Play-Doh doing nothing but exist without any of our senses eternally. SCP-2846 is a seafaring Davy Jones combo, with 2846-A being a giant octopus close to 1,000 meters in length, comparable to the Kraken of common lore. Appearing randomly anywhere within the Gulf Atlantic portion of the Atlantic Ocean, it will attack any civilian vessels like crews and merchant ships without any sign, unless a ship is equipped with U.S. Navy deep sea radars, although this advanced tech would only give about a five-minute warning of its impact pending attack. While it seeks to crush vessels in its dark and dank tentacled clutches, its natural enemy, SCP-2846-B, a Pennsylvania-class super dreadnought armed to the teeth with cannons and many other military-type weaponry that rises from the ocean depths in a vaporous mist. The two will fight non-stop, using their strength and military might in a 21st century Sea of Thieves style duel, until eventually the Kraken is heavily injured or incapacitated. Once A has been defeated, B will submerge back into the ocean until they reappear again somewhere in the area to do battle once more. 
So, ferrying the ocean in the Gulf Atlantic will probably have a giant squid destroying your vessel and either crushing you alive or having you drown in the Atlantic. If the Dreadnought were to show up during this skirmish before you die, you could also be caught in the crossfire of its high military power and onslaught, considering it refuses to leave without winning against the Kraken. So you'll either be crushed, blown up, or drowned to death. SCP-2859 is a space anomaly that acts as a veritable portal to Quadrant 4B of our solar system, often appearing within unused spaces by man, like the inside of walls in a structure. Over time, it will bleed out beyond these structures, destroying them in the process, basically making these walls cave in, and creating a vacuum in its presence, destroying oxygen and creating micro-radiation in the immediate area. If anything were to draw near this portal, the SCP will pull the person or animal inside of it, never to be seen again. The portal will close and relocate anywhere from an hour to a week after its appearance. Beyond this portal lies SCP-2859-1, existing as a large serpent-like alien creature estimated to be nearly 50,000 miles long. It waits by this portal in order to eat anything that comes through it, being able to know exactly where the portal will appear on Earth and even who will possibly be pulled in. So at any time, your wall could collapse with an unknown portal taking its place to possibly pull you in to be eaten by a serpent that, well, it sounds like a kid randomly wrote a big number to make this sound intimidating because for it to be 80,000 kilometers in length as a serpent, it would be more than twice the length of the entirety of Earth's equator, which the Earth's equator all around is only about 40,075 kilometers. But either way, a creature that big could just have easily just appear and swallow the planet whole if it desired. So you going through the portal and getting swallowed, that's no biggie compared to the grander scheme. Especially considering that it has mated before, it has found a mate. Meaning, there are more serpents of this portal-loving, gigantic-sized nature out there in the cosmos. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. <laughs> Now what if skeletons were kaijus with a thirst for blood? SCP-2863 will appear as a 30-foot tall animated human skeleton within the borders of the birthplace of kaijus, Japan. A catalog of 206 of these giant bony boys are known to exist, which ironically correlates to the number of bones in the human body, not accounting for the 207th bone that appears when I see Danny DeVito naked. Oh, 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 Jesus oh, Christ! Oh, they only exist to find and consume humans, much like regular titans in Attack on Titan. However, these skeletons move near quietly, with only a faint sound of rattling behind them. Hiding in darkness, they will spring up and catch humans in their marrowed grasp, proceeding to bite these people's heads off and then drink the profuse gushing blood from their torn neck holes, where their skeletal structure will absorb the blood instantly. However, they only attack in completely darkened areas, and due to the urban development of the densely populated island of Japan, their appearances have starkly dropped with no murders by their hands having happened since Halloween of 2008. While currently contained in the SCP organization, it is still a very real threat if these spooky scary skeletons left Japan to find darkened and open countrysides to run within the darkness, like in Russia or the United States. These 206 boners could easily get more head across the world and rip us a new one. Now, are you obsessed with cheese? Do you like cheese? Well, if you are, SCP-2867 will be your downfall. Being a gorgonzola cheese, apparently produced by a company called Terrence Farms in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Once this gorgonzola has been consumed, a person will become infected and hereby become obsessed with cheese, having their eyes become glazed and their heart rate and saliva production heavily increasing. Infected individuals will become so plagued by OCD, obsessive cheese disorder, that they will almost forcibly try and get others, including other humans, 
pets, livestock, and even bugs and pests to eat the dairy product and infect them as well. Now, only to date do reptiles and tardigrades have a resistance to this cheese addiction. Now, why would this be a Keter level threat though? Well, infected people will do whatever they can to satiate their bottomless craving, even putting together improbable ingredients to desperately create more of this gorgonzola that they crave so badly, even throwing together poisonous chemicals and sharp objects. They will literally throw anything in a bowl, mix it together, and hope it is that gorgonzola cheese they love so much. Besides consuming hazardous substances, Others that find the cheese they are looking for will simply gorge themselves to death, literally dying from eating too much cheese. Infected cheese lovers will grow violent if their needs are not met. And it's safe to say that this cheesy virus could spread far enough to where wide-scale cheese overdosing, poisoning, and cheese-related violence could lead to a high death count. SCP-2872 is a pedigree racehorse that hasn't won a race at the Kentucky Derby in five years. Because of its once free nature, being bound and cooped up for over five years in a stable for so long will cause it to start running in a rectangular rotation at an exponentially increasing speed. Colliding and destroying anything that gets in its path, it will reach a top velocity of 320 meters per second, or 715 miles per hour. It was capable of destroying vehicles vehicles and roadway along Highway I-24 in Kentucky to cause $30 million in damage, destruction, and death. It will immediately slow down and stop if someone utters the words, whoa boy, near it. But if kept cooped up in containment for a long period of time once again, it can shoot off like a freaking rocket as it repeats the process of before enough to literally enter terminal and then escape velocity almost instantly to wipe out anything nearby its containment, causing heavy amounts of injuries, damages, and even deaths nearby because it shot off so quickly it would cause a shockwave big enough to do this kind of damage while it leaves the Earth's atmosphere to float through space freely for all eternity. SCP-2093 is an intangible force that affects inanimate objects, most commonly items that can be picked up and carried around by humans, like lighters, keys, Game Boys, and, and very rarely, larger objects like trees and buildings. The affected object will infect people without any sign of infection, and once they are afflicted, will become overly obsessed with the item in question. This obsession will slowly cause their mental state to degrade only wanting to hold, pet, touch, or even treating the item in question as their own child. If the person is separated from it, they will enter a number of emotions that usually lead to violence to others or themselves, going into a psychotic rage or panicking. Any number of emotions can be experienced here. Now, the person in question will drop everything in life just to coddle their item and eventually will die due to mental and physical degradation even committing suicide if separated from their object for just a few days. If the item is placed with another that is similar in nature to its infectious guidelines, it will transfer to it and await another human to make it their obsession with an untold amount of objects in the world carrying this SCP curse. So, if you know a friend obsessed with their waifu body pillow, just, uh, just let them be. They can't help themselves. I mean, what? He's not really causing any harm to anybody. It's the SCP's fault, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to deny anything here, okay? Go on, go on to the next episode. SCP. SCP-2935 is another portal into an alternate reality of our own planet, with this portal being located in a limestone cave beneath a cemetery in Joppa, Indiana. However, this version of Earth is completely devoid of all life, including people, plants, and animals, as well as operational machines and microscopic organisms. In this incarnation of Earth, all records indicate that between 3 and 4 a.m. on April 20th, 2016, every living thing experienced cell death all at once, leaving the world at a quiet and calm standstill with no sound but the wind to drown the silence. No birds, insects, or anything to make noise, just the wind. The world as a standstill image of when it shut down as no body or left behind food would rot as microbial life was also extinguished. 
Surprisingly, oxygen is still plentiful for those that stumble into this alternate Earth. But with how unknown the means for this worldwide extermination even occurred, it is possible to conclude that finding a way into this alternate reality of Earth could lead to a similar event happening in our own reality. We may have caused an event set in motion that'll wipe out everything on our planet. SCP-2950 is a metal chair. It's comfy to sit in, and if you sit in it too long, you won't want to not sit in it, and you will get violent if people try to get you out of that chair. Be careful of chairs. SCP-2966 is a way to wipe not only the buttocks, but to wipe someone off the face of the earth. Being a roll of infinite toilet paper that when squares are ripped from it will immediately take any source of energy in the nearby environment in order to create one of these infinite butt wipes. The energy can be sound or even heat. If many squares of toilet paper are ripped off all at once, the fecal cleansers can steal all available heat energy in the area and bring the immediate temperature down to absolute zero and below, effectively freezing whoever took from the roll and causing them to die of hypothermia. Now you could say, oh, I'm just not gonna take any toilet paper. Well, refraining from taking paper from the roll will cause it to accumulate energy on its own and radiate it away in a complex system where an infinite amount of energy will be expelled all at once at some point basically causing an explosion more powerful than a 50 megaton blast. Yeah, that's right. This toilet paper will be nuking you. So make sure you use only a few wipes every once in a while and find a healthy balance of wiping your ass or else you'll either freeze your ass to death or have it disintegrated in a nuclear explosion sparked by toilet paper. Because with great butt wipes always comes great responsibility. I mean, didn't we learn anything from the corona riots of last year? Well, that about wraps up things for today. If you like what you heard, didn't like what you heard, or don't like that I skimmed over some of the SCPs along the way, and you want a part four in the Keter class series, or you want to suggest a different why you wouldn't survive, let me know in the comments. I always appreciate any kind of comment, even if it's criticism, because comments are amazing for the algorithm and they get more views. So, works out in the end. The channel gets by by thanks to beautiful wow people like you just for watching, and I can never thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to watch this over hour long video uh, and the stuff dumb stuff that comes out of my brain now if you want to support the channel a bit further and you don't have to if you don't want to but if you want to be featured here you can do so in a number of ways financially like being a longtime supporter donating to my patreon as a patron where you can see my videos before anyone else joining as a member of the channel by hitting the join button on my channel page or donating during my live streams and i don't know when part four will be be coming out probably sometime after I move which thanks to all of you for supporting the channel for nearly five years I am gonna be moving to my own house soon so I am eternally and everly thankful to you guys for watching my rambling content to make that possible thank you guys so much the streams are gonna be so much better and I'm gonna have my own office it'll be great which big thank you to wisefish the coolest motherfucker I know for editing today's video I don't know what I would do without him so be sure to support him as well by heading over to his channel and subscribing for game reviews and lore. He's got a sexy British voice, by the way, don't you, wise fish? You're goddamn right, you beautiful American bastard. Be sure to check out my other SCP videos by clicking the link above or checking out the rest of the Why You Wouldn't Survive series by clicking this other link here. Until next time, stay safe, stay secure, stay contained, stay protected, and stay wow.